Hello everybody, Nick here at Scog and Dickey. Welcome to class, <laughs> Professor Adams if you will. Today's tech video is going to be talking about quench in engine theory. Now we're going to keep it simple here, we're not going to get too crazy, but we get phone calls every once in a while. Somebody has an LS3, they don't want to put too much money into it to try to up the compression so they say hey do you have like a 20 thousandths cometic head gasket i'm wanting to crank that pressure up and we have to explain to them no no that's that's not a good idea you have to think about the quench and we get a lot of customers that just aren't aware of it so this might be a little bit simple some of you probably know already about this so we're going to cover a little bit of basics here i'm going to be talking about small blocks and of course the ls and the lts because there are differences and the differences that can change this quench value and even how to calculate for it a little bit so Let's just dive right in. Very simply, quench is when the air piston is at top dead center. Here's a piston and a cylinder. This space up here is, of course, your cylinder head. When your piston is at top dead center, how far is that gap in between the top of the piston and the bottom of the cylinder head? Now, there's a lot of theories on what this number should be. You know, some people say, oh, you can do, you can do 30 thousandths. You know, some people say, no, you gotta do, you gotta do 40. And some people say, no, nah, that's too much, you gotta do 50. Well, the thing is, there are, sorry about that, there are a bunch of theories on that. We're not gonna cover those theories so much. We're just gonna give you some rudimentary guidelines to follow so you can play it safe, mostly for you street guys and for you guys that are trying to help maybe pick up a little horsepower in a small block or LS2, LS3, maybe even a 5.3. Now, one thing you need to know is when you're trying to calculate this figure, how far is the piston above or below the deck surface? A lot of people, when they're doing a short block or building an engine, they tell you about the zero deck. That means the very top of this piston is perfectly topped off at the top of the block. Zero gap in between the top of the piston and the top of your deck surface on your block. So then your quench would be whatever the thickness of the head gasket is. In some of the Chevrolet Performance small blocks, the thickness of the head gasket might be 28 thousandths. What you don't realize is most production small blocks are anywhere from 25 to 30 thousand in the hole, meaning they're not zero deck, they're slightly below it. So your quench value would be the thickness of the head gasket. Let's go ahead and call it 30 thousandths. Most of the ones I've taken apart, they're pretty close to that. So 30 thousandths, pretty simple math. We all did it in elementary school, I hope. It comes out to 58 thousandths. For your everyday pump gas street iron small block, with a forged steel rod, it's perfectly fine. You run pump gas on that all day long, you'll never have an issue. But I bet what you're thinking is, but I've, I've read magazine articles about a Felpro head gasket for the small blocks where I can take that 28 thousandths gasket out and I can put in a 15 thou head gasket, real thin thing. It is literally just a coated shim head gasket. Your cylinder head surface and your block surface have to be perfect to run it. Perfectly clean, perfectly flat and straight, or you'll get leaks. But it, of course, goes from 58 down to 45. And then you get online, you go to a compression ratio calculator, and you do the math, and you go, hey, that's worth a, a few tenths of compression. That'll help a lot. You can do that. The problem is, is that if you're a small block guy, and like me, I grew up a small block guy, and you graduated up to the LS and the LT platforms now, you might be trying to use some of that same theory. And so you're sitting there thinking, man, the factory LS head gasket, you know, usually is 51 thousandths. That's ridiculous, that is so thick. So you add that to, man, oh, 30 thousandths. That's, that's an 81 thousandths quench. Man, that's too much. Man, even with an aluminum block that expands a little bit when it gets hot, that's too much. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna find a thin head gasket. Here's the problem. Unlike the Gen 1 small block in production engines, the LS engine, 
can be anywhere from zero deck to actually slightly out of the hole, and that can cause some problems. For instance, some of the early LS1s and LS6s, we measured sometimes up to eight or nine thousandths out of the hole. So take 51 thousandths, take away eight thousandths, you actually get a 43 thousandths quench, which is actually pretty good. That's right on the money for something that is, you know, 6,500 RPM, you know, stock rod and aluminum block. So then you try to run a Cometic 20 thousandths head gasket and you wondered why you wiped out your rod bearings. That's because at RPM, this does kind of expand in little microscopic amounts, but it's enough to where if you tighten up this little red area that I squiggled your quench too tight and you rev it up, you can actually make this piston crash into the cylinder head ever so gently and it will wipe a rod bearing clean out. So that's where we get a lot of confusion. We get a lot of customers calling up trying to run a thin head gasket on newer engines and you can. This all has to be measured, especially if you're doing a custom short block. Your machine shop would help you out with that. When we do short blocks here for our customers, we also give you that information and help you pick. If you're running 85, if you're running boost, if you got an iron block or aluminum block, or maybe like some of the more geniuses in our race shop, if you're running an aluminum rod on a big block, because that e needs even a bigger quench value because those stretch just more than iron rods, especially at some of the RPMs that they turn. Now, I understand that I covered this in a bit of a, a basics. You know, this is, this is Quench 1301 at the University of Engine Theory here at Scog and Dickey. And I did that on purpose. You'll get a bunch, of, a bunch of guys, very experienced guys, that have a lot of theories on this. Some say it doesn't matter. You can run a, you can run a hundred thou, you can run that big of a quench. Doesn't mean anything. You got other guys that claim you could run it 20, 30 thousandths and don't run into any problems. We like to keep to the basics here. We like to keep to what manufacturers know is safe because remember, a manufacturer will actually test a car a lot harder than you realize. And that's what matters. We want you to have fun without having to pull it back into the garage, smoking, knocking, or glitter in your oil. So. I hope I was able to answer some questions here today, maybe kind of give you some understanding and some guidelines when you're throwing together some parts and you're trying to get as much performance as you can out of the engine. We appreciate you guys stopping by for another one of our weekly tech videos. We know this wasn't a, you know, big block or a turbo LS on the engine dyno, but this is important information and keeping to the basics is what we want to do to help out hot rodders like you and me. Please give us a like, a subscribe and a share on both Facebook and YouTube. Once again, we're out here trying to push out as much helpful information to our customers and hot rodders alike as much as possible. And of course, stop by next week for another one of our Friday tech videos. See you then.